An elder at a local church asked a question at their Bible study, which I was able to answer after careful thought. He asked, how would one be able to tell if a minister of religion or preacher were a Christian if they were silenced and not allowed to speak but remained silent? My answer was, by their fruits you shall know them. To which I now add, in just the same way as a Christian woman behaves in church, and a man's wife can demonstrate her virtue as a Christian by her conduct to her unbelieving husband. The Apostle Paul's instruction to Timothy, 1 Timothy 2.13 But I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence, which I don't think would have gone down too well. However, this question provoked an inquiry into church history and relates to my recent posting about difficulties associated with articles of religion amongst particular Baptists. My inquiry relates to the great ejection of gospel ministers in England in 1662, where over 2,000 ministers were silenced by an act of Parliament when it was passed. The response of these ministers to this act of Parliament serves to demonstrate that the established Church of England, so-called, is not the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, of which Jesus said, I will build my church, but rather its enemy. It also serves to show that like begets like. The behaviour of the Church of England is that of her mother church, the Church of Rome, or as the Apostle John calls her, the mother of harlots, and identified as apostate Jerusalem, that great city where the Lord was crucified, Revelation 17. And, as I suggest, the union of the three major branches of so-called churches today, whether it be Greek Orthodox, Roman Catholic and Protestant churches, are children of the mother of the harlots, identified in the book of Revelation as Babylon, that city where our Lord was crucified, and referring to apostate Jerusalem. Who is this Babylon may be read in this publication by Don K. Preston, a recommended read for all Christians. On the 24th of August, the Act of Parliament requiring a perfect conformity to the Book of Common Prayer and to the writs and ceremonies of the Church took place, the effect of which enactment was the silencing of nearly 2,500 ministers, the death of 3,000 nonconformists and the ruin of 60,000 families. Such was the result of the restoration of Charles II of infamous memory. To ascertain the spirit which actuated these ejected ministers, it is sufficient to refer to the following selection of their farewell sermons, which were delivered at the very moment they were agonising under the fangs of persecution, but which discover nothing but a combination of Christian graces. Bishop Burnett admits, many of them were distinguished by their abilities and great zeal, and the celebrated Locke has remarked, Bartholomew Day was fatal to our church and religion by throwing out a very great number of worthy, learned, pious, orthodox divines. H.C. Spurgeon said, These great preachers, whose names we remember, were men who counted nothing their own. They were driven out of their beneficiaries because they could not conform to the established church, and they gave up all they had willingly to the Lord. They were hunted from place to place, they wandered here and there to preach the gospel to a few. Those were foul times, but they promised they would walk the road fair and foul, and they did walk it in knee-deep in mud, and they would have walked it if they had been knee-deep in blood too. But now we're all little men. There is scarce a man alive now upon this earth. John Bunyan spent twelve years in Bedford jail for his nonconformity. I fought while my sword did clave to my right hand, and then they were joined together, as if the sword grew out of my arm, and when the blood ran through my fingers, then I fought with more courage. The following publications, entitled Farewell Sermons, are a collection of some of their sermons delivered on the day of the Act of Parliament that silenced them. In light of this, please view my recent YouTube article Difficulties associated with Articles of Religion Amongst Particular Baptists, Part 1 and Part 2.